So uh, today tutorial would be on how you can hack the Redi source code. And plus, I'm going to show you a demo on a chat plugin that I created for you guys. So you can see how you can integrate it on Redi source code and uh, see your functionality on your Redi dashboard. So we first can start. Uh, I have. I'm going to share my screen and we can get right to it. I hope uh, it's visible. So I have uh, just prepared just a few slides, so it doesn't need that much slide presentation. We're going to go straight to the code. Just to give you some notes from the regard source code, the front end is done with React, and the back end of the React entire source code is done with Python Flask. Uh, the, as for styling, they have used less. Uh, you'll see it on the uh, as for package, for example, you are building this uh, packing add-on for your uh, on the redash. So if you want to add this new package, like OpenAI, maybe you, you will install it. You will need that to install your redash source code to see the chat you, are, you have created. So if, when you want to install pattern package, anything, uh, you you have to use point three because that, this is the uh, and package they used to add the Python uh, package, so use that. And as for other uh, package, other than Python, uh, you can use YARC. Just this is how they build their reader source code. So try to install any additional package you want through this thing for the Python, use Poetry, and for the others, use YARC. So with that being said, we're going to move to their reader source code. So you can see this, right? Okay, I'm gonna move on, considering you are hearing me. So since I'm not seeing the screen, please unmute your mic and let me know if there's any problem. So we're gonna go uh, to the regard source code. So this is the regard source code, which you will get by, you just go to their official regard uh, GitHub and you can find it here. This is their entire source code. So just clone it on your system and you'll find the entire source code. So what you can see here is in this client folder, every UI they have on their dashboard, you can find it here, there, everything. This is already with uh, the redash instant. I'm, I'm running it in my machine. And this entire UI you see here, you can find every code in their source code for so uh, just under components you will find different components uh, just from if you are already familiar with react by just seeing how this uh, the, the j6 you can definitely see this is a react component and if it is seeing the structure this is how react is implemented you can see everything how they call each component to understand just to have a better code structuring when you build react uh, applications you can find some new things here. So try to go through as much as you can just to understand new things. So this is, uh, and I, like I told you before, they have used less. This is another type of CSS stylish style sheet. Uh, so it's like CSS, everything pretty much similar with CSS. The only difference is less has more capabilities than CSS. With, CSS, with less, you can import another less file and use it in another less file like uh, the import that we do in our python module less can give you as functionalities inheritance there are different uses less have but uh, other than that pretty much similar with css so to build their styling they have used less style sheet uh, they have the documentation on less on uh, in, in the google so size our site and see what less can give you advantage so this is their desktop bar. You can see dashboard queries. This, this is, sorry. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this is their menu bar that you see here. This is the dashboard, the queries, the alerts, great. Uh, it's found in this folder, in the, in the desktop bar. Like this, just try to go through everything to see how uh, they have done their Redash in instance of the source code. 
So in the client, you can see everything through React. You can see how they manage to do their UI. And the other important thing on the resource code would be just for the, the Redash folder. This is where every backend code for the Redash uh, backend is found. So this is the models where they assign their table fields for the queries the visualization for example you can see here the organization you can create organization or you can read a dashboard or in the source code you can see how they set up the model for the table so they have the name slug this is just like uh, creating a table in your postgres database or any database they just have uh, structure their model in the model folder they have different functionalities how they run their backend, so try to go through everything and see what they have done. But the most important file I would recommend you start from would be on the hard drive for handlers folder, there is api.py file, and this is where they assign the REST API. So pretty much the front end part on the client side in this folder, you will see this URL more often. These are the backend REST APIs with assign every functionality here. So for example, API dashboard, this is where you see your dashboard contains on the dash instance. So to, to see the function they use to, uh, to have that or to have that functionality, you can easily just click here, go to the patient, and you will see the function, how they fetch data, the users, their users' data uh, from database. They uh, redash use Postgres as their main remote database to gather user information in the, in the entire world. So uh, this is how, this is the function that they use to fetch the data from the database and display it in your Redash dashboard. So by this, start from this function and just try to see each uh, REST API, what it can do, what it, it what it, uh, what is it doing for the Redash. So you, this may, all entire REST API will be implemented on the client folder. So the client side user interface. So every component, uh, pretty much cause this REST API to access some functional in the back end and just do the normal flow from the front end the back end connection has been done through this REST API. So I would recommend just to understand more the source code, try to understand what this REST API has to do for you. So you can understand each for this, everything, every folder here will be touched by these uh, functions that are assigned here. So you will pretty much found the whole food cycle if you start from here. So this is their entire backend structure. Uh, they they use Flask Python, what else is there? They have made tests on their backend. Uh, they have made a very true tests on their each component. Uh, even the client side, the React application has been tested with Cypress testing mechanism. So everything here, their, their source code is pretty much perfect, like the stream source code, if you remember that. So you can just try to see new things that you can take on your future project, new kind of dealing with uh, data or dealing with this full stack development. There is a lot of shit you learn from here. So try to uh, hack it through like this. So I hope this is clear how you can read this dashboard. Uh, they have, this is it pretty much just try to go through all, all over everything. You will have some ideas how you can do it. So now I'm going to show you how you can add this add-on so you can see a new fun a functionality of chat being applied to your dashboard. So this is the Redash dashboard. This is the chat I created here. So I have put a very detailed readme file here so you can, it can guide you to install it on your Redash, Redash instance. So just follow it line by line. So I'm going to show you how we will do this here, line by line, add it so until we see a chat on our Redash dashboard. So the first thing you have to do is just clone this plugin on your computer. So since I already, I already cloned it here, I have the file the plugin. So let's just follow this instruction. So again, uh, I think you have or almost most, almost all of you have already installed Redash on your search for the last week project. 
but if you have not i have already have put it uh, i think you already shared this one on the week two uh, documentation but this is a uh, tip that i used to in uh, to install or to uh, the redash instance in my machine so this is pretty much what i did so follow this and you will have every uh, you will run redash on your machine on your local server machine so i use docker to install this so I have flown the Redux dashboard, just make these uh, steps here. So we're not going to waste time here. I think most of you have done this one already. So assuming you have Redux instance, let's just go through the, uh, applying the add-on on our Redux dashboard. So the first thing you need to do is install this package inside your Redux uh, source code. So this Redash, this is the source code. So just make sure you are under that source code. And like I told you, uh, OpenAI has a Python, a Python package. So install it through this. Uh, we need React icons, React syntax highlighter. This is just additional package I use in my in the chat uh, plugin to just make the UI more interactive. So you can uh, for you guys, you might use different kind of. Uh, we define your UI or additional uh, features on your UI. So if you have those package, try to use yarn add, yarn add for Python package like I for you on the slide, or to re-add. So uh, you will find your package like that. So now let's just go to the first step to install this plugin or recharge the dash dashboard. So as you can see, there's nothing, in the, this is the their formal redash dashboard. So what we are going to do is we will find this new functionality of chat where we can speak with OpenAI with the AI to talk about our queries or with data visualization and everything. But right now the plugin only, the purpose of the plugin only give you a place to talk with the AI about anything. So let's go through the first step. Uh, it says here, copy the chat folder entirely. So uh, if you see here, let's see, this is the chat plugin so if you see here i have named the folders so it can it, the same the folder as the redux source code so it can give you a guide where each file is so re, you see client app which is the same folder name on the redux source code so the client app i did this just to make easier for you what you have to, uh, on the installation so on the client react app and the chat folder copy the chart folder entirely and place it on the client app in the source code components folder. So what we are going to do is here on the plugin components, this chart folder, just entirely copy it. Go back to your dash source code. This is my source code under client in components app folder, then components folder, just paste the chart folder entirely. This is all you have to do. And now let's go to the next step and copy the chat.py. This for this the chat folder contains the entire UI for the chat. And this chat UI is a Flask Python code that states the integration between OpenAI. So just uh, copy this chat.py and put it entirely to the Redash handlers folder. So I have put the chat.py under Redash handlers chat.py. So the name also will regard will guide you where to put it. So in your source code, sorry, here, in your source code folder, go to the Redash folder here, and the Redash, there's a handler folder here, and just paste it. So now this is the UI. Go here, on the Redash folder, handler folder, let's chat to up, copy this file, and go to your Redash source code under the Redash folder handlers. Just paste, paste the chat.py. This is where the background or the backend code found. So I'm going to show you what these files have. And now we have copied the files. The next step would be just there are some uh, few integrations we have to put to connect this front and back and forth. 
before we do that, I'm going to show you what this file is contains. So under the chart client app for Kronos, I already put the chart up. So here you can see this UI. This is a React component just to display the charts. Uh, the whole the entire purpose of this uh, code would be just to display the chart between the AI and us. So this is the UI for that. And this uh, I have used less. So just to fit with the source code, you use less because they have used less in their uh, CSA as instantiate. So try to follow that when you use your add on. See, it has to fit with the real source code since we are adding this functionality on their already existing system. So I have also used less to make sure my UI have style. So this is my the UI for the chat UI. So the other thing that what else? So the other thing we add is the back end. So let's see under the reader, handlers folder, we have to this chart to UI. So here you can this is a simple class backend. The only purpose of this backend would be to connect our conversation or our natural language question with OpenAI. So this is the integration with OpenAI. So we need OpenAI key for this to work. So assuming you have on your dot in file you have open API key, it will fetch it. And the other thing you have you need to see on this integration, this is this code you can find on their open AI documentation. This is a simple integration to start conversation with AI. So we have used this model. This is open AI model that I'm using. This is the message in the question. The question would be the natural language question that will be that would that would come from the front end that would be passed to the back end so the open AI can answer according to the question. So the question will be fetched through this functionality of Python, which is getting the JSON and it will get the value uh, from the front end. This this response or this question comes from the front end part. So right now the front and the back have are not connected. So we will connect them in a few. Uh, the, the other thing I want you to capture from here would be this part. Uh, in the morning, you have talked about prompts. Uh, this is a small version of prompt uh, in this form. So in this code or in this text, I'm commanding the open AI that it is an assistance for the, the reader's visualization assistant. So if you ask it in this chat, who are you? He will answer you, I'm a reader's visualization assistant. So I'm just giving it uh, some kind of um, Character. So you are a reader's visualization assistant, give in SQL queries, data visualization. And if you are asked any question regarding uh, that is different from SQL queries or data visualization, I have to, I'm instructed to answer that is only, uh, well, you, you can see here. If you ask about a topic aside these two topics, which means SQL query and data visualization, make sure to respond that you have no information regarding that question. I'm only here to help you with your query and data visualization question. So if you ask it another uh, question outside SQL or data visualization, it will respond like this. So you can write anything. You can command the open AI to have any character. You can tell him he's a kid, so he will understand that he's like a child. So it's just an instruction you give to your open AI, to the AI. So the way he can converse with your users would be in that instruction sometimes. Uh, it pass this instruction and do why you didn't ask them. I just uh, ask them. So just try. It needs more training, and you have to have some better way to write this prompt. So open AI understand you and make sure uh, it it doesn't uh, you know uh, disobey your command like that. So just try to. So in the future, on the next tutorials, you will learn more about prompt engineering, so you will have a better understanding how you can command OpenAI. Just this is a small version for this demo. So what else? So uh, after analyzing the question, it will give you an answer, and the answer will be returned. And the return response, again, you will see it on your front end chat. So assuming you have understood what this code does, now we have our back end and front end. Now we do the integration between the two. So this part is important. So let's just go back to our GitHub and try to implement the next steps. So go to your redirect source code here. Uh, this is the next step. 
So under the application layout index, just here, find this file. You can find this, just follow this path. And the main goal is find this index.jf and paste this import line, code, line of code. So let's go to the front UI source code under app, under component, under application area, application layout. This is this is the file index.js. So here, just import this file, paste this here. And then you can sit in the same file. You are required to either we can copy the entire thing and replace this retard, or uh, the main thing is are just uh, the thing that we want is just to add this chat box component in the index. So, index. So, either choose what you want, either just copy this one and paste it there, or just copy the entire thing and replace the return method. So, I'm just gonna do that. So, on the retard. And this one or replace it with this one. So the chat book component is added on the index. Okay. Now the next thing would be on the client app services folder, create an info a name with chat just chat do js and copy the following code. So let's copy it here. We have to find this folder on the source code here on the client app. There is a service folder, this one. And create a new file with the name child.js. And here is this code. So basically, you can see from here that the backend and the front are connected through this access package. So if you already have experience with full stack development, I'm, not, I'm sure you're not new for Axios. Axios help us to call URLs external URLs and just paste uh, data or transfer data to that particular URL. So uh, through here, I'm uh, calling Axios to call me this URL, this uh, REST API URL, API.chat. So right now, this URL doesn't exist. So the next step would be creating this API. So our front end, when it calls this REST API, will find some kind of function. So the next thing would be assigning this REST API. So go to your handlers, which means the backend parts of the code, and find this API.py. And in here, we can assign uh, our REST API for our this uh, backend that we did before for the, for the integration with OpenAI. So we're going to go to the source code here. Under the readers, there is a folder uh, handlers. And here, there is API.py. So here, we're going to import our backend code. Which means this uh, handlers to just chat in this one, the one that we discussed, our integration with OpenAI. So it will call this functionality. And the next would be assigning our REST API URL. So we can name anything we want. But for this particular plugin, I have named it like this. So use that. So uh, copy this one and paste it. It says under the, find this line of code. And under the code, you can paste this one. So under which means here, you can find this here. API is what to do this. So under this, anywhere, you can just copy. So it's not complete. Basically, what it's doing is it's calling the charge source resource, which is this class name here. I already imported it here. And I'm giving it REST API, this one. So in my client side, if I call this URL, it directly found this class. And under this class, it will find this function. So if I pass a data, this function will be triggered and it will. Uh, this function will be the one that's played and it will re return the response. So this is the integration, how the integration is done. Now we have connected our front end with our back end. So for this application to work perfectly, uh, so I think we have we are finished. So I guess we I can rebuild my instance and see if I have put my add on in my dash uh, dashboard. So just build and rebuild my instance. 
So you can see here, uh, to start chatting with the OpenAI, you need to have an OpenAI API key. So I know you're, you guys have already told you will be given a new API key, but uh, there's also an option to create a free API key. So uh, just uh, if you click this part, it will direct you to OpenAI. And in your profile, there is an option here, uh, this sidebar. So under API key, you just can create new, create new security. So it will generate you new security, but the free API keys have limitations, but the one that will be given to you have more capability. So just to see this add-on working, you just can create and sign up for this platform and generate any key. Just to see the add-on working on your machine. So this will take just a little time for it to work. So until that one finished, if you have, if you guys have question, you can ask me until this is finished building itself. You can animate and start talking if you have any questions. Let's just wait for this meeting to finish. Now let's refresh our dashboard and you should be able to see the add-on. There it is. The add-on has been added. This is the add-on. The chat UI here and I just can start chatting with the uh, AI. So I can say hi. It has a really happiness to today. Uh, let's start uh, asking some the question on is it good query? Query for that expression. It give you an answer. So if you want, just like normal chat GPT application, you can copy the code if you want, is that, and you can use it on your queries. But this is a simple chat app. So basically, right now the code doesn't have the user dash the users data. So you guys, you guys have to give it that data, so it can answer you based on your data what you have. Uh, it doesn't have a connection with chat uh, with database. This add-on you can add that functionality to it also so for example here you can see it gives me an answer but if i refresh this table all this chat i have done i had added with the ai would be lost because right now this data if you see it on the front end on the chat box code it is saved on this user state on the chat history user state i'm just using user state user state of react this function is it will save your data until your page is not refreshed. So if I refresh this data, let's see. If I refresh this, if I see it, I, I will load the data. So basically our chat should uh, contain our previous history, that chat we have uh, with the AI here, like normal text we have. The history is there when you click our messages on our phone and everything. So to have that, you have to make sure you use this data, the chat you have been on the database. So uh, you can use a Postgres, remote Postgres database to save the chat data. So every time you a comment, it will find its previous history. And for the database connection, like I told you, you can assign the fields on the model and use the connection. Uh, just to do that, you have to go through the source code again to see everything because they, they have the functionality of saving queries in dashboard of users on the database in that connection you can see on the dashboard on their source code so by doing that you right now you have a fully functional uh, chat for your uh, redash dashboard so this is how the add-on work on your redash okay 
So, uh, yes, if you have any question, it will be time to address it. Okay, is it clear? Do you understand what I did? Yes, confirmation. So any question on the source code on the add-on? How you connect the redash with our data would be, you have to connecting the data with, uh, your data has nothing to do with the add-on, just uh, on your, This is the data source. This part, the, the normal redash. I think it's true, here, but on, on the normal redash uh, source support, they have an option to add data sources, and you can connect it with other with different Postgres. They have options. I don't know why I'm not showing you, but the data source, their built-in functionality, will give you an option to add different uh, kind of database systems. So just connect with those and you can access your data this one when you run your redash for the first time you have an option to connect with data source so connect that it will ask you to put in uh, configurations for the particular database try to connect that and you can access data from that particular database On the chat, there's a question. Yes, just don't touch the existing source codes. I think it'd be a question. Uh, ask a question there. They don't modify their existing source code, but you can uh, draft their their useful data, like their users' uh, queries or dashboard data, to your add-on to your personal uh, functionality, and use that data. So you can create auto generated auto generated SQL binary maja. I think you SQL queries. Uh, for now, the add-on has no functionality like that. It just gives you an option to talk with the the AI. But what you, to make it auto generated, you have to feed the data the your redash data with source code. So when user asks the question, it will automatically give them queries based on the data the data information it had about the user. I can share you the GitHub. Okay, any other question? Anyone who's confused, try to use this uh, time to just clarify things. Uh, 
uh, you burn how, how you try to use the we say they use to install the redash ui instance i think there are different options on the internet try to use the one i shared on the github you can find it there uh, usually when you have too much uh, try to uh, delete image and containers that you have on your docker and try to reinstall it again other than that we, we can uh, talk about the installation on the Slack. Yeah, about prompt engineering, you will get uh, a tutorial that's focused on that. So uh, you can research it, uh, on the internet till then that you will get a tutorial on that, Abraham. Yes, if the purpose of this, the add-on is just to give you a starter code and, sp and especially to show you how you can make an integration between you, your UI and your backend. Uh, so you can copy it, but your product would be, at the end of this project, would be might be different from this one. So just to give you an idea how you make the integration. So if you want this plugin in your system, you have to add in your local redash installation. Or this is for Jose, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take this, uh, it's clear for everyone, just give me some kind of sign so we can Analyze the tutorial. Yeah, you have to add your data to you to the Redash through the connect data source that I showed you. You have to connect your database uh, with your Redash first. Usually, you will use Postgres. So, so you fetch uh, your data from the database. You have to Load it to the database, definitely. Sure, I'll share the Yes, for the backend, chat, uh, chat.py is the only starter file you're using. This is the backend code only. EDA parts. I didn't get your question. Uh, not naive, you can continue. Uh, hi, Rahmat. Hi. So I think, I don't have a specific question. I just want to know uh, when will be the recording? Like when, when is it going to be available? If we can get it as soon as, you know, okay. today. Uh, sure, I will, yeah, I will talk with Stena Academy team so it can be posted to you today. Yeah, this will be really helpful to go over okay. you know, what you just did. I'll make sure you got it today. Uh, Shatru, I didn't get your uh, question about the idea part. So, uh, I think if you have any questions, we can, do, we can end it here. This is the link if you need it. I guess uh, you can do the ADA on, on a notebook, uh, not on the source code. Uh, if you, is that a requirement on the documentation? I'm not sure. Doing the ADA. So if you can do it on the notebook and push it on your git. Yeah, Rodolf, you can continue. Okay, sure, everyone. Thank you for your presentation. 
I would like to ask about the uh, OpenAI API key. So uh, you you have shown that we can generate uh, an API key, which is good. But from from my own experience, uh, if you create a, if you create an account uh, for ChatGPT, for instance, an API, uh, Open AI, and uh, you can generate your key. But after three months, when you generate your key, that key doesn't work anymore. They ask you to pay. No, so, then uh, yeah, then is that I, I shared you uh, that I showed you now uh, on the session or the one it's already found on the GitHub file uh, URL that I shared. It doesn't do like that. You just simply sign up, and under the uh, sidebar you have API key options. Just it, it will you have options. Just create new keys anytime you want. Oh, okay just uh, yeah just take the uh, website that i shared it's much easier okay please can you, could you put the, the link in the chat yeah i have this You can find the open a, a, a key URL on the GitHub that I shared right now on the file. You can find it on the readme file. Great. So Abdul Hamid is asking questions. Since I have haven't done that on Apple Silicon, if there's any word you can reply to him on Slack. Atsha, do you, uh, if you, uh, I'm not sure, is it, is it requirement on the documentation to build EDA? So just if you want to do an EDA, on the data, just do it on your notebook. In okay, Shoto, you can do it on the EDA, and you can uh, put use the cleaned uh, data on your dash. Just make sure it's a requirement to do an EDA. Okay, so if you have any question, I guess we can end this tutorial. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Hope everything is clear now. First, we can end the recording and have a good night, everyone.